My name is Hanny Dow, and um, I'm a senior applications engineer with Multilane. And I want to thank you guys for continuing to tune into our virtual demo series. This episode is about CMIS testing. So CMIS stands for the Common Management Interface Specification. And the key word here is common because you have all these different new module form factors coming up, these 200 gig, 400 gig, soon 800 gig modules, OSFP, QSFBDD, you know, QSFB 100. And you know, everything's kind of seems that it's going into a different direction, but the CMIS standard unifies all these different module form factors, all these speeds, these classes, and these form factors under one common term of engagement, one common rule book, one common management specification to ensure that when it's time to plug those modules into hosts and everything is built by a different vendor, you have a rule book that ensures successful interoperability. So what it starts with is our high speed analyzer. This is the 4066-ANA, comes in the QSFPDD form factor. We have it in all the major form factors. This one is QDD. You will see it has a high speed female and male connector on each side to ensure that you can maintain that signal integrity in between a host and the module that you're testing. You will also notice that we have these sort of control pins on the edge and these control pins are used to force the module into different states, like let's say a reset state or a, um, or a low power or a high power state. And that's very important because these modules have a DSP chip in them. The advent of this DSP chip introduces a lot of complex management techniques that must be enforced to ensure the module is safely going to different power modes, safely delivering feedback of information to the host in different operating environments. So these control pins can be manually jumped or manually probed, but what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our our 4066-ANA analyzer card, which mates onto those control signals just like so. And now instead of you know, manually controlling those hardware pins, we're going to be able to manipulate them over our seamless analyzer GUI. So I am going to switch over to the hardware setup. We're gonna talk about that. And we're going to actually show you the seamless analyzer GUI in action. Now here's a view of our full test setup. As a host, we are going to be using our 4062-MCB, our module compliant board for QSFBDD. And as a module, we are using a 400 gig DR4 with an optical loopback. Now we are going to be able to show you those different vertical testing modes that we talked about. And what it will start with is immediately connecting to our GUIs. Now, this is the GUI for the 4062, which is gonna behave like a host. But what I really wanna focus on here is our analyzer GUI, the, the GUI for that analyzer card that we talked about. So I'm gonna go ahead, put that in the center here, and I'm gonna press connect. And right away, okay, we're connected to our QSFPDD analyzer. You'll see that we have a bunch of tabs on the left-hand side that allow us to sort of test in different, um, in, in different orientations. And what it starts with really is the I2C configuration tab. Those three, um, different I2C testing modes are master mode, slave mode, and bypass mode. Now, master mode and slave mode, these uh, terminologies are actually going to be updated in the next version of CMIS to something a bit more um, inclusive and politically correct, but for now we're going to use the, the antiquated terminology just to minimize confusion. So I will start with, with master mode. And the first thing that you'll notice that we can do is we can set the I2C speed, the speed of the I2C bus, which is feeding into that module that we're testing. Now, this is very important because that speed is faster than it ever was before with, let's say, old 100 gig modules. We need to ensure throughout the different stages of our CMIS certification that if we set a very high I2C CMIS uh, bus speed, then we can ensure stable operation regardless of how fast the clock is. Now, we can also do clock stretching, which will sort of add a delay to ensure that the module or the host under test can respond to the commands effectively if it is delayed a certain amount of time. So I'm not gonna change that for now. I'm just going to press get to see that our I2C speed is at 100 kilohertz and our I2C clock stretch is at 1000 microseconds. And that's good for me, I'm going to continue. Now, 
one thing I'm going to start with, I'm going to go a bit out of order here, is the memory map. So what we see over here is the full um, lower and upper memory map of the module. And what we can do here is we can, you know, refresh it. So, okay, now we can see that it is, it is updated. And now you'll, for the first thing you'll notice is that according to this register over here, we are running CMS 3.0 in this module. I can use this tab to load an MSA, save an MSA, or write a new MSA that I loaded into the hardware of the pluggable of the optic. So that's the memory map tab. On the functional test tab, I have a bit more fine tuning control over reading and, and writing to the, to the memory map. So if I go ahead and do a multi-byte read of the first uh, uh, 20 uh, bytes of page zero and I press read, you will see that same data over here. And again, doubly confirming that uh, we are running CMS 3.0. Now that's the functional test tab. Now I will change gears a bit here and I will go into bypass mode. Right now, remember in bypass mode, we're kind of listening in to, those, to the different uh, conversations happening between the module and between the host without necessarily changing or affecting what's going on. So right now in that setup that we showed you, we've got the high speed and we've got the low speed signals that we're not necessarily changing, but we're listening into. So, with that, I'm going to jump into the I2C tab. Now, one of the coolest things that we can do with this analyzer, because we're in bypass mode, is we can capture that conversation. We can sort of listen into that conversation between the module and the host. And right now, we'll show you what that looks like. You can see that we have the SDA, you know, the data showing that certain packets are being captured. We can also uh, actually save that, uh, that I2C capture and I'll pull up one of those uh, one of those files right here, and you can see if we save one of those files, we get to see the actual content of those captured packets, as well as the binary data. For example, what are the x and y values? You know, what is the voltage level at every different clock uh, point in time? And that is critical for you know to you know honing in to see what what are the issues that you're encountering when it comes to uh, CMOS testing. Now. Um, that is the I2C tab. One, one cool thing I'll show you here is what we'll do is we'll pause the monitor on the host. And while I'm pausing the monitor, essentially what I'm saying is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to stop the communication, suspend the communication between the module and the host. And then what you'll see in, a, in one or two seconds is that now there's no I2C capture being detected. So now we know that works. So I'm going to resume the monitor and I'll continue. So now we can talk about the control and alarm signals tab. This is where we're offering a sort of, you know, a, 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 you know, a software method to be able to manipulate, read or write all those different control, uh, those control jumpers that we, that we pointed out earlier. We can monitor the state of the pull-up resistors, whether they're too low, whether they're too high and whether they're pulled up, you know, and we can go into any of those sort of control signals and we can, you know, force it into a certain state or we can read that state. Finally, something very exciting to show is the state machine test. So we talked about these sophisticated uh, DSP based modules and how they need to, you know, safely cycle through different, um, different power sequences to avoid overheating the switch, to avoid losing your link, to ensure that everything is running stable. So we have the state machine test, which is taken straight out of the CMOS standard. And let's say I start the module in high power mode, which is you know one of those things about CMOS 3.0 specifically. Um, I go right into that state machine, and now I can actually force the module manually into different operating modes. Let's say I can go from reset mode to module ready mode. And right now I've got my power meter right next to me here and I can see the current is going from low to high depending on what mode I'm forcing. And you know that shows that it's actually working. On the left hand side here, we've got the, um, the, the, lo the log window, which is showing me in real time what control pins are being forced into, to enable these different states. It is also showing me the elapsed time delta in between these different transitions. That's what I'm reading right here. Now let's trigger a fault. Let's pretend actually something goes wrong. Um, I believe we are running software initialize mode right now. And in this specific mode, um, I am forbidden from forcing my module from reset mode into low power mode directly. 
yeah, keep in mind that's a seamless 3.0 specific thing. Now I'm going to go into low power mode and just like that, you will see that I'm going to get a fault. Now this seamless flowchart is not going to let me go directly from reset into low power mode. And because of that, I get a fault. I can see exactly on the left-hand side what the log was behind this fault. And you know, that is a pretty good summary of how we can allow them, we can allow, you know, module vendors, module consumers, and everybody in between to really, you know, take a really close look at their seamless implementation, whether for their whether it's for their module or for their host or for the module host tandem. So that is a quick overview of our CMIS testing GUI. Um, you know, once again, any questions you have about this, we've got a bunch of resources on our website, multilaneinc.com. And please feel free to email us at fae at multilaneinc.com. My email is hani at multilaneinc.com, H-A-N-I. And I'm also happy to answer any questions that might come up. So I want to thank you for tuning into this quick demo. and. We are wrapped.